at the Sunday River Ski Resort in Maine. Of course, New England in the winter is a great place to spend time if you have snow equipment like snowboards or skis or even snowmobiles. But today we have snow machines of a completely different kind. We're talking about short course off-road racing trucks. They're designed for the dirt, but today we're going to race them on the snow. So we got 900 horsepower, they're 4,000 pounds, and four-wheel drive with spiked tires. We'll see how it goes. Should be certainly fun. We're going to welcome in Cameron Steele to the broadcast team alongside myself, Jason Wygat. Now, Cameron, you're fresh off a third place overall finish at the prestigious Baja 1000 truck race in the desert. And you and all these guys have experience in races like this. But this is a totally different scenario than racing in the desert. Absolutely. I mean, some of us race desert. All of them race short course off-road, which is basically stadium-style off-road, something like Supercross in trucks, if you haven't seen it before. Today, a totally different curveball. They're going to take their wares, their toys, their equipment, their work tools to the snow and the ice. Now, what that means is they had to be prepared for something totally different. And I'll tell you, some of the drivers aren't quite as set up as they should have been when it comes to their uh, goggles or their face shields, because with the snow conditions and the and the blanketed white it's going to make it very interesting but the good news side by side last year ricky johnson was our winner and it was a timed race yes two trucks were on the course at one time but this time they are starting side by side and snow dust is going to be a whole new element for these guys which i don't think is going to be very friendly if you're the driver behind yeah absolutely so a lot of experience with these guys in the desert and the dirt but today they got to make it happen in the snow it might be new to them might be new to you also so we'll give you some information and a rundown to give all the behind the scenes info so you could be an expert on frozen rush before we make the lights go green and go racing but first let's get the driver's perspective and we'll welcome the third member of our broadcast team kelly stavist for that I'm standing next to the winning truck from last year's Frozen Rush. That was driven, of course, by Ricky Johnson. This year, it will be driven by his Red Bull teammate, Bryce Menzies. And like every team that competed here a year ago, they've made changes to this truck to accommodate those sub-freezing temperatures and the snowy tundra here in Maine. Most noticeably, these giant snow flaps here at the back of the truck. Those are to help prevent that snow roost from coming up and blinding some of the competitors. One thing you won't see is these heating systems been put in place connected to both the oil and water lines to help keep those fluids warm even while the truck sits so they don't freeze over and cause further problems. You see more flaps here at the front of the truck again just to help with that roost and visibility for these drivers. Then as we move to the front of the truck, You'll see these running lights here, this light bar attached to the front of the truck. These are now mandatory here at Frozen Rush 2015. Now, the drivers have some options as far as helmets are concerned. Bryce has opted for his off-road full face helmet. Of course, he'll be putting some defogger on his lens, but he thinks that this is the way to go to stay warm and have good visibility. Ricky Johnson, on the other hand, has gone for this open motocross style helmet paired with some goggles. Again, he prefers that to help keep his visibility clear. But you can see there is a lot of prep that goes into both the trucks and drivers for these frozen conditions here at Frozen Rush. Well, Bryce Menzies definitely fast so far, both in the practice and the qualifying sessions here. But we're going to show you who's driving in this event. There are nine really elite drivers. So really, in this bracket, it's possible for favorites mm. to be eliminated in round one. We'll have a last chance qualifier between Todd LeDuc and Carl Renazetter. The winner of that goes against the fastest qualifier, Rick Johnson. And Menzies has to take on none other than Brian Deegan, who's one of the fastest of all in short course off-road. So they could be eliminated as soon as the first round, and they're the fastest qualifiers. You could be one and done, a first round clown you don't want to be that and Deegan I actually talked to him he said he was trying to get inside the head of Bryce Menzies saying hey this is your event bro you better do good type thing so it's fun because the rivalry rivalries really are coming to a head even though they're all friends for the most part that should be fun you see the bracket will keep you updated as it goes on throughout the day as far as the race format is concerned we'll start with our quarterfinals they will be two laps each we'll add more laps as we go into the latter rounds it's a single elimination you win you move on you lose you're out out, and the higher seat has the lane choice. So far, it seems like drivers want to start on the right side. We'll see if that changes as the course conditions begin to get chewed up. Now, Cameron, you mentioned rivalries. There are certainly a whole bunch of them out here. And what's really cool about this board is there's really two different series that take place, one in the Midwest and one mostly in the Southwest. So when you combine forces like this, we've got rivalries and some rare combinations of drivers knowing they've got to beat each other today because they really hate to lose, and they really hate to lose to the guys that are going to be bad at Frozen Rush. Trucks like these Pro 4s don't just run on 113 octane gas alone. To race, 
and more importantly to win, requires a mix of two other fuels, testosterone and ego. And that invariably creates an entertaining byproduct. Good old fashioned rivalry. Red course versus blue course. Head to head racing. Yin versus Yang. Loser is out, winner moves on. At Frozen Rush, it's binary. You're either a zero or a one. I've had kind words to say about Ricky Johnson. I've had bad words to say about Ricky Johnson. You know, when you're a spoon-fed rich boy, I guess anything comes out of you. Me and RJ have had huge battles. I was really surprised they'd actually invited me here to this event. Like oil and water, or true and false, after years of bumping and banging, some of these guys just plain don't care for each other. I've had my run-ins with, uh, you know, Bryce Menzies. I've uh, battled out with him for the last three years in Pro 2, and Rob didn't win any, but... Uh... <laughs> Fast or furious? Incidental or accidental? Doesn't really matter when the racing goes door to door. Body panels get damaged, egos get bruised, and tempers tend to flare. It's awesome to have somebody that makes you want to throw up. When you have somebody that, that makes you want to be the best that you can be, I think, I think they're a total blessing. Even or odd, war or peace, when the checkered flag flies and the snow settles, you're either in or out. If we have to take that little shot to take home the trophy, we will. Don't let anybody fool you. You can bet the losers ain't gonna be none too pleased about that. So it's interesting, this event almost takes on like an all-star game type feel because there are two major off-road series, the Lucas Oil Off-Road Championship and the Torque Championship. So a lot of these guys don't get to race each other every weekend, although most of them have been at it long enough where they've met at some point. But what's also strange is, as much as they are rivals, they're also friends because a lot of them build trucks for each other, which I find very intriguing. It's very interesting. Scott Douglas and his motorsports group actually are fielding three of the trucks that are racing here today. Ricky Johnson, who set the fastest qualifying time, and Brian Deegan are also in Scott Douglas trucks. Also, there's some interesting relationships. Rob McCachran used to be on Menzies Motorsports with Bryce Menzies. Of course, Ricky Johnson was also on the Menzies Motorsports team. Interesting note, Carl Rennes and Rob McCachran, they won the Baja 1000 together in 2007. So it's hard to decide if they're friends or rivals, but we guarantee once the lights go green and they go racing, they all want to beat each other. We are seconds away from the first green flag. This has never been done before. Now the clock is running! Oh, Carl Ren is there! Oh, no. Over rotates and bumps off the cement wall. Ricky Johnson move into the next round. Fancy's heavy on the throttle. Now coming up to that crossover jump. Manzies will take the win. Going up there, jumping 70 feet down the snow, just having a blast. Here comes Rob McCaffrey out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Nice turn, a little bit on the wide side. Johnny Greaves will move into round two. Any preference who you face next? I hope it's Ricky, because I want to kick his ass one more time. Oh, Red Bull semifinals at the line. Ricky Johnson, he may overdrive the track this time around. Bryce Menzies trying to find a little traction. It's going to be close. Moving into the finals, Ricky Johnson. So stoked to be in the main event. But Johnny, my ass is here. Come kick it. These, without a doubt, are the two best Pro 4 drivers in the world. Johnny Grease, Ricky Johnson. Ricky Johnson will be the first one to take off. Nice bit of traction at the start. Here comes that screaming Toyota. Breeze over that crossover. Here comes Ricky Johnson into the final corner. Pushing very back to the corner. Checkered flag is waving. Here comes Johnny Breeze. It's going to be close. Through the final corner. He gets through cleanly. Four, three, two. 
Now, although they only raced at Frozen Rush for the very first time last year, the overall sport of off-road racing has been around since the 1960s, and a lot of evolution in the racing vehicles, of course, during that time. At one point, you're basically taking stock buggies or stock trucks, maybe putting better tires and shocks on them, and going racing. At this point, though, the machines are completely purpose-built. To give you an idea, the passenger seat in most of these trucks, that's where the engine sits in these vehicles. So it's a huge evolution. It's just like any other top form of motorsport where these vehicles are the absolute best at what they do, which is going fast on dirt or snow, and of course jumping, which is one of the unique forms in off-road motorsports. For more on that, let's send it to Kelly Stavist to get inside these race trucks. You've seen the massive jumps here at Sunday River, and maybe you've wondered how these trucks can fly 150 feet through the air, land to flats, all without damaging the trucks. Well, it's thanks to these guys right here in the wheel wear. Those are the shocks, and they are custom made for these off-road trucks to do those insane jumps. Here's what it looks like outside of the truck. This thing is a monster, and it gives these vehicles about two feet of wheel travel or suspension to help cushion those landings. Compare that to more of your everyday shock that might be on your car at home. This thing will give you about six inches. So I do not recommend trying what you see these guys doing out here in Frozen Rush back at home. It will not end well. So there you go. You take 900 horsepower, about 20 inches of suspension travel, and you can kind of defy gravity. But it's still going to be difficult because they're racing up and down here, which is not something that they normally do. Most of the courses are generally flat. So we'll see how that affects the trucks and their performance on this track. Well, the cold weather is definitely going to affect how the fluid runs through those Fox shocks. So uh, it's something to think about as well. Let's take a look at the course if we can, just the big scenic picture of it. Now, if you look at this, Jason, one thing that's really going to develop during the day is that right now it is a beautifully groomed race course. Now, we're used to this in off-road racing. It breaks down, but there's going to be snow holes that you won't really be able to see because it's all white. Now, you've seen the delineation lines that are painted so they can see the edge of the jumps or the edge of the course, but as they continually run into a certain section and, and side load, let's say, a right rear tire, that's going to develop a pothole, so to speak, and that's going to grow and grow and grow if that's the preferred line. Now, as the drivers ev uh, evolve on the course, they're going to have to try to miss that obstacle because it could unsettle the truck so much. Now, imagine if some of those develop on the face of the jumps and especially some of those kickers on that downhill section through the gates. Yeah, that was the part that was really wild to watch when we had qualifying yesterday. Let's show you some specifics, tell you exactly what this track has in store for the drivers here at Sunday River. It's such a beautiful location here at Sunday River, Maine. The top of the mountain, about 3,100 feet, and the average low, well, about five degrees, and it feels like every bit of that here today. As the drivers get onto the course, the fastest qualifier will get to choose his line, whether it's the right side or the left side. The right is the blue, the left is the red. They're going to go right into a step-up jump, then they'll split courses. The uphill rhythm section will become a big part of this. As they move up the elevation of the mountain, they will go through the over-under and then to the top bowl turn. This is critical. Pick a good line. Watch out for the holes that develop throughout the event because there will be more and more laps as we move forward. Down through the gate section, it's fast and tricky. The chicane section is no longer in the course. It wasn't set up for, for racing that looked good. They're going to run straight down into that gap jump. And then the big bowl at the bottom. Pick your lane. Be careful. If you're behind someone, it's going to be very hard to see the truck in front of you. We've seen a lot of mistakes there during qualifying and practice. And you're going to get an idea what it looks like when we go head to head. We haven't ever done this before at Frozen Rush. And you see the two trucks have their choices of lanes. And the real cool part is when they first come together, it's actually by jumping over each other with this crossover. Well, the whole event is very cool. There's a lot of adrenaline for the drivers. Visibility is going to be interesting. As we said, this chicane section is no longer in the course, but that's just part of the future of what we're looking at here at Frozen Rush, trying to put more interesting obstacles, and it is a very interesting course this time around. Critical on that jump. Don't over jump it too far because there's a little bit of a kicker that you can hit when you land, and again, that bottom bowl turn is going to be part of where the big racing happens. And on the left side there, you see the blue lines. That is that final turn we're showing you with the course animation where the trucks could be going side by side, battling for that checkered flag. And we want to get you folks involved now, too, now you're getting up to speed on how Frozen Rush works. So we'll welcome you into the iPowwow. You can go to uh, Red Bull TV slash vote and vote for which one of the drivers you think is going to win. Now, what's interesting is we're only letting you pick between the top four and qualifying because they've kind of established themselves. But Cameron, his field stacked. 
could potentially be none of those four guys that win here. Absolutely. I mean, with the head-to-head -head format, one mistake and you're out. You have to go with the favorites when you start thinking about it, though. Johnson and Bryce Menzies have been the fastest. Rob McCacken, the Wiley veteran, third fastest. But as you said, anybody can win this event. You want to try to pick one? I'll just go with RJ's defending champ. That's easy money, easy bet on my part, but that's man, a, you never know. That's a pretty fair and easy way to go, yes. but you know, he said himself, he's really got to stay on top of that truck if he's going to be the quickest on the day. I like Bryce Menzies, but for some reason, I'm thinking Rob McCacker is going to be the guy today. So we'll see what happens. I, I like the rivalry factor that McCacker and Menzies could end up in the semifinals together. Rob Mack would be pumped. It's probably only the last big trophy he doesn't have on the mantle left, so <laughs> that, that would be true. good. He just won the Baja 1000. And uh, this is just a preview of some of the great stuff you're going to see all year long on the Red Bull Signature Series race and off-road trucks today. But no matter what weekend it is, we're always pushing sport to the next level. Since 2012, the Red Bull Signature Series has brought you the absolute best in action sports. Shoot back oh my God. The excitement continues in 2015 when we deliver an all-new season of the Red Bull Signature Series. Oh, my bringing you the best action on the best courses from inspiring locations around the world. Join us all year long as we witness top athletes compete in the most progressive and innovative sporting events on the planet. Wow, that move incredibly hard. Judges are gonna like that style. That is how you do it. Red Bull Signature Series, the evolution of sports. Oh, yes! Now, throughout this preview show, we've been talking about how easy it can be to be eliminated no matter how fast you are, just one mistake. And we'll be showing that in its finest form with a last chance qualifier. That'll be our first race. You've got two big names that are going to have to battle it out, Todd LaDuke and Carl Renazetter, to see who just makes it into the bracket. One of them gets eliminated. We like to say he's the man who will be going home in tears. One guy who will be facing the winner of that round is our fastest qualifier of all, Ricky Johnson, and he is with Kelly Stavist. Frozen Rush defending champion Ricky Johnson picking up right where he left off a year ago, setting the bar and qualifying with the fastest run of the day yesterday, Ricky. And afterward, you told me you took some chances out there and they paid off. What were those chances? Where are you making up ground on the rest of the field? I'm not telling because I got to race against everybody again, um, you know, in a little bit. So the, big, the biggest thing is that the guys from Douglas Motorsports, I asked for small changes, a steering pump, a little bit different on the idling, make a different air box to try to keep some war, warm air going into that carburetor, and everything worked out perfect, you know. Um, did I do a perfect lap? No, you always make a little mistake and you leave a little bit here and there. But I just drove the heck out of it, to be honest with you. I drove as hard as I absolutely could, and I was fortunate enough not to get a five-second penalty. So um, when you're racing with this many champions, you better be willing to take some chances and hope that it's your day. And, you know, qualifying was my day, but the race is another issue. Well, the advantage of being the number one seed is you'll face the winner of the last chance qualifier. The bad news is it's a couple of veterans who had mechanical issues in Todd LaDuke and Carl Renazetter. So not really much of a break. What do you anticipate? Who do you anticipate facing? Well, Carl's had some more time. Uh, Todd had to change a motor. But here's the thing is you got Todd LaDuke is probably one of, if not the best monster truck driver right now, races pro four in Lucas. You got Carl Renazetter, who's one of the winningest Luke, uh, short course off-road racers. So regardless, there's no easy seed here. So, and the bad thing for me is that I haven't really had a chance to see how fast these guys can go. Carl made a small mistake, got off course a little bit, and had to go to the back. So I don't know, but I just better haul ass when it comes time to go. Well, Frozen Rush started with Ricky Johnson, and now the champion is looking for back-to-back -back titles here in Maine. Good luck, Ricky. Thank you so much. Ray Ray. <laughs> So RJ is the fastest, but man, margins of uh, victory don't come much smaller than that, basically down to a tenth of a second between he and Bryce Menzies. Absolutely, and you would think that they will end up facing each other in the semis, but as you said, any kind of wild card can come up, and there are some great drivers here at Frozen Rush. Yeah, and a lot of them learning on the fly. Uh, LaDuke didn't even drive yesterday, want to save his equipment for today, and he thinks there's really going to come down to putting pressure on drivers and getting them to make mistakes, not just him going fast, but them making errors and going slow. That's your uh, qualifying results, which leads to our bracket. We talked about it earlier. RJ will face the winner of the LCQ. 
Douglas and Horde, that's that 4-5 or five bracket. If you know anything about bracketology, that's usually the close one. That should that, be fun to watch. That one should be really fun to watch, as they all will. Rob McCachron, the veteran over RJ Anderson here in the bracket. You can see now RJ, youthful exuberance at 21 years of age. This is his first time at Frozen Rush. And I think, you know, with the lack of four-wheel drive experience, it's going to be very tough for him. And then the final bracket, Brian Deegan is newer to four-wheel drives, but he has been on the podium already. Bryce Menzies, very new to four-wheel drive. In fact, last year's podium really is first time racing the four-wheel drive. All right. It's going to be interesting once we rack them up. And that's what we want to do. It's time to go racing here. Red Bull Frozen Rush in Maine. It's going to be good. And it is time to go racing. This is going to be awesome. First driver we'll talk about here is Carl Renazetter. Now, he's a veteran. He's won a lot of races, as you can see there, the graphic on your screen. But this is a new truck, and he has definitely had some teething problems, and that's why he's in this LCQ, qualifying not the way he wanted it to go. This is a guy who's done it all. The bottom line is this. He's had success in almost every type of race, but he has been star-crossed every time he has come here to Frozen Rush. For a guy who's been an overdog for most of his career, it seems strange to call nine-time national truck racing champion Carl Renazener an underdog. But that's exactly the role the Laguna Beach native finds himself in here in Maine. Sure, he's got over 65 Pro 4 career wins over a 16-year career. And yes, he's the 2013 Pro 4 champion in Lucas Oil off-road racing. Starting with last year's edition of Frozen Rush, the top step of the podium has been elusive for the father of four. A crash here last year against Johnson wrecked his hopes. And since then, Renazener has finished fifth, fourth, third, and second in Pro 4 racing. But he hasn't notched a win. That's a frustrating pattern he's hoping to break in Sunday River. Okay, so Renazetter had his equipment problems yesterday. Even worse for Todd LeDuc, who blew an engine during a practice session and decided not to even participate in qualifying yesterday. But he's a guy who can definitely adapt quickly and figure this racing out on snow because Todd LeDuc is a driver who has truly done it all. Every single one of the guys out here is a straight-up badass on four wheels. But only one of them can claim to regularly backflip a truck. Monster Truck Freestyle Champion, former Downhill Mountain Bike National Champion, and all-around motorsports renaissance man Todd LaDuke is that guy. I suppose it's only natural that when your dad raced trophy trucks and your brother Kyle is the current Lucas Oil Pro 4 Champion, that your competitive instincts run a little deeper, that your fire to do something spectacular burns a little brighter. When you get second, you don't even want to look at RJ. You don't even want to look at McCaffrey. We hate to lose. Can LeDuc improve on his eighth place finish from last year? And we're racing here at Frozen Rush and a great start for LeDuc. And he's going to be the first truck you see over what will be the finish line jump two laps from now. So Renazator's got some work to do. So you'll find out right away Frozen Rush has some difficult, definite technical aspects to it. Renazetter started in that right line. The Duke went to the left. He had to chicane back. So Renazetter, even though he had his problems on the start, he moves to what would be the lead where the trucks came back together for a second. So they'll come together, they'll leave, they'll come together. So there's different aspects to it. Here's that downhill skating spot. Now Renazetter had a problem with the carburetor and the differential. And here's a good look at LeDuc who had the engine problem you talked about yesterday. Yeah, and the starts actually are one of the problems that Renazetter had with that new drive line and the carburetor problems, and it definitely cost him again. So right now, Renazetter in the lead, but like you said, he had the shorter lap the first time around. It's up to LeDuc to go even faster on the short line on the second lap and catch him. Wow, what a beautiful look. And a great job by Todd, just really carrying momentum all the way around the turn. What you want to look for is choppy turn, someone that maybe slows down too soon, has to get back on the throttle, has a rotation and over-rotates, or is a short rotation, has to re-rotate. So 
one big fluid motion most of the time is really going to be the faster way. And you saw Renizetter there nailed that corner perfectly. You didn't see either the over or the under rotation or the push or the slide. And look at this. This, this is, is how close wheel to they wheel. are. This is going to be crazy as they get to this jump together. There's only going to be that big final corner left. Who's going to take it? LaDuke on the inside. Renizetter throws Woo! it into the outside. An amazing move. Can he make it work? They are side by side. Renizetter with a slight oh! advantage. Renizetter takes it and will go into the bracket. We knew it would be door to door, but I didn't know it would literally be door to door. The first time we've ever had trucks side by side and they totally brought it. Oh, 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 oh. wow. <laughs> For those of you watching at home, that was the first time we saw a race side by side and it paid off exactly as you would want it to. Two different courses. The side by side start, they go in their different lines and then when it came down to it at the end, they were side by side and Renazetter took a huge risk running yeah. that speed down the outside and, and holding it on. Unbelievable job by Carl to get Todd there at the end. And well, you can take us through it here, Cameron. LeDuc's on the inside. You would have thought he had control over this, but like you said, Renazetter just didn't back down. And Todd may have thought that exact thing. As a driver, you may think, oh, I have this inside line, but look at Renazetter just runs it to the outside, drifting and takes the position. Now here's the exit for this final corner, headed to the finish line. LaDuke's down 200 horsepower with his backup motor. That might have made all the difference. Renna's that are able to edge him out. Doesn't get much better than that. Carl Renazetter edging out Todd LaDuke and a nail biter. Talk about that last turn and how you got him just before the finish. Yeah, you know, fortunately I had the outside line and uh, this Lucas Oil General Tire truck was uh, very hooked up and I just threw it in with a lot of confidence. I couldn't get off the line, so I had to make up some time on the track. It was really tight there at the end, but man, what, what an awesome way to finish a race here. There was so much snow flying over the trucks. When they said frozen rush, they really meant frozen rush. Up next, you got to face Ricky Johnson. As you just said, you have trouble getting off the line with this manual transition transmission. So how can you overcome that against RJ? I'm going to have to make up a lot of time up on the track. So I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to bring my A game and uh, Ricky's fast, but I'm really confident with this Lucas Oil General Tire truck that uh, I think I can make up some time out there. I'll definitely give it up on the start though. All right, Carl Rennes that makes it through the last chance qualifier and will face defending champion Ricky Johnson. finally gets one to go his way. Well, that's a lot of risk throwing that truck sideways into the last turn. Those spikes can catch. And uh, talking to a couple drivers, it's a little bit unpredictable sometimes the way you feel inside the truck. And what a beautiful day. It's turned out to be bluebird skies. And we've had all of it here today, whether it was below zero or, well, it really wasn't. But it was so cold and it warmed up a little bit. Now the wind and just it, it's really a beautiful day. Yeah, we had overcast and snow not that long ago. And now it's cleared up nicely as we watch Bryce Menzies roll into position. Uh, was fastest when we had practice earlier in the week, was second fastest in qualifying yesterday, and was third at this race last year, and really considered one of the uh, prime candidates to win this thing this year, and he definitely has this course wire. So let's get on board to Bryce Menzies. He's gonna give you, give you a little bit of a course preview, what it's like to drive here at Frozen Rush. But the start line lined up side by side. The emotion is, you know, it's really nerve wracking. You're nervous. All the emotions, you start thinking about the race, try to focus on your line. Waiting for that green flag to drop. And once that green flag drops, then it's game on and wide open throttle. First gear, second gear, into third gear. You're crossing the Red Bull finish line jump. And then we're going to take the right line, which is the blue line. Wide open in third gear still. You got three stutter bumps that you're gonna bounce through. That kind of upsets the truck here and there, but you gotta just kind of keep the truck pointed straight. So we're hard braking into the 90 degree left downshift into second. You're going under the overpass jump, and then it tightens up really hard. So slide the truck in second gear, get it pointed straight, and then you're into third, and it's pretty much wide open down the hill as fast as the truck can go. That's where your eyes kind of open wide. Uh, you start thinking a lot. You're reaching speeds 90 miles an hour, and uh, you start thinking if anything can go wrong, it can go really wrong here. But that's also the fun section. Check up as hard as you can on the brakes, off camber, get the truck slowed. 180 left, back into second gear, back up to third, across the Red Bull finish line again. 
Then we're going to take the left line, which is the red line this time, and it tightens up really fast. You got a sharp S turn, so you come in, downshift into second, you got four big whoop jumps that you're going to bounce through and try to keep the truck straight as possible on the gas as much as you can to get all your speed up towards the big uh, over under jump that we're going to hit probably around 70 80 miles an hour as fast as we can up to the top where it's a 90 degree left wide open then you're going to want to break as hard as possible back down into second gear um, and then this is where you come into the chicanes it gets real tight technical in here you're going to go you know left then right you're in second gear on and off the gas and brake to keep the truck kind of straight and pointed and then down to the bottom again over that crossover jump that's huge we're flying it you know 150 feet and then we're coming into the finish line turn wide open as hard as we can come to the finish line brake downshift into second throw the truck in there as hard as you can with the snow and the ruts crawl out second gear third gear cross the red bull finish line and that's uh your go pro course preview for red bull frozen rush Men's are going to be facing off against Brian Deegan, the general of the Metal Militia. And what I love about Deegan is, for all his bravado and the marketing and the branding that he's done with the Metal Militia brand, he is a legit athlete, be it in his Supercross or Motocross days, his freestyle Motocross days, and now as a driver, both his off-road trucks and even rally cars. When he races, he usually succeeds. Let's learn more about the general. The general of the Metal Militia is an action sport icon. He's won Supercross races, racked up 10 X Games medals, and he won the Lucas Oil Off-Road Lights Championship on his first try. But it's pretty safe to say that Deegan and Snow don't get along. The last time he tried taking it from the dirt to the snow, he broke his femur and both of his arms. But with age comes a cage, and Deegan will be relatively safe inside his Pro 4 truck. But turning his winter bad luck around here at Sunday River will be entirely up to him. So Deegan hoping that this event in the snow goes better than his uh, failed attempt at some jumps at the winter X Games way back in the day on the motorcycle. But going up against Menzies is going to be tough. And Deegan didn't have a ton of practice time this week, so he's kind of learning as he goes. He's never raced in this event before. Definitely an underdog when it comes to course experience. Bryce racing here last year, finishing on the podium in third position. Also Bryce getting more practice time as you talked about. But never count Deegan out and we'll see uh, it comes down to horsepower and traction coming out of the start. And do you punch it and spin, or do you kind of creep into it? We'll see what the strategy is as they get the green. We have 684 studs in each one of the tires on these trucks. And four-wheel drive, they'll still spin them off the line. A little edge to Menzies out of the hole. And he has that straight line going into that blue run, which is on the right side. Deegan has to make the left turn into the red line the first time through. So they'll do each route or each line one time each in this quarterfinal matchup. All the quarterfinals will have the same number of laps, two laps around. Deegan's truck built by Scott Douglas. It's actually the latest and greatest. They're saying they're using Deegan's oh, truck. Kind of Menzies. Anything. Wow, Menzies hit the wall. Drifting a bit there, holding it, trying to carry momentum. He came out of those out of the gates and you can see Deegan working his way down the course and he has some a little bit of whiteout from what it looked like to me there. So Menzies has the shorter run on the first lap so of course he's in the lead so it's up to Deegan to try to make that ground up. That's what Todd LeDuc had to do the last time and he did get side by side with Renner Zetter in that previous run. We'll see if Deegan can do the same. The uphill rhythm section on board with Menzies you can see choosing the lines there he has to stay multiple times to his own line. We'll see if they come out about side by side. Deegan is just across the finish line jump now. As I was saying, that truck, they think it has the potential to be the best one out here, but they're still learning as they go. Menzi's truck is obviously super dialed in. The truck actually won here last year. Oh, Menzi steps out. He has to correct it. He has to chase it. And Deegan is going to pop out here on the side by side, but it looks like Menzi's with the advantage. Clearly, as he's heading down into this, yeah, this last jump, it's going to be all Menzi's unless he makes a mistake. He's got to pitch that thing in there. Try not to over-rotate it. Deegan's digging, but it's going to be too little, too late. Bryce Menzies, strong in qualifying and strong here in the first round. He's going to advance. And Deegan, first experience here. I'm sure not what he wants. He doesn't want to get eliminated. But uh, as Bryce Menzies just showed, 
getting that one year under your belt at this event is a huge advantage. Deegan comes back next year, I'm sure he'll be all the better for it. A great run by Menzies, but we did see a couple mistakes, at mm -hmm. least one mistake there. And we saw it on the first lap. You called it, you said he hit the wall. Well, the rear end of the truck stepped out. He was trying to carry his momentum through those gates. And then the next time around, coming from the top, you could see him st uh, step out again. And they're going downhill to that section, which is a really strange sensation. A lot of them saying even with the gas completely floored, the truck still wants to endo some, there were some of those downhill jumps. So they've got to adjust to that as well. Here's what it looked like for Menzies. This is the top of the course, and he hangs this big left. And this downhill section is very treacherous. But hey, we're at a ski slope. That's what you've got to expect. Absolutely. As we watch him go through, this is where I believe he got, yeah, see, he, he tried to come around that ob obstacle on the inside, and he rotated out. The back of the truck stepped out. So you lots of risk, and there's the other one the second time. And wow, if you if you drive the rear end of the truck around and catch one of those uh, mounds there, the snow mounds, it, it could really uh, throw the truck into a tumble. Yeah, and as you said, it's really hard for them to see where the traction is and where the traction isn't. So far, Bryce Menzies able to hold on. Let's send it down to Kelly. Bryce Menzies will advance beating out Brian Deegan, and I had heard that Brian tried to get in your head before this race, putting the pressure on you. Looks like it didn't pay off. Yeah, you know, in off-road racing, we race against each other all the time, so it's always a great battle. And uh, this truck's been fast, and we kind of struggled in qualifying a little bit, but we got it back. And it's one of those events where if you mess up just a little bit, you're done for the whole day. So we came a long ways. We want to win this event. And uh, I really want to see a head-to-head -head against me and Ricky Johnson in the final. So uh, I'm rooting my teammate on to make it all the way to the end. And uh, we got one more round. It's either against Rob McCacker and RJ Anderson, and they're both great competitors. So uh, I'm looking forward to these BFG tires hooked up great. Thank you for Red Bull, GoPro. KMC Wheels, everybody that helps me out. Thank you guys. We're on to the next round. Woo! It was a solid win against Brian, but a couple bobbles out there. How do you clean that up for the next round? Yeah, you know, with all the snow that came down last night and earlier today, it's a, a lot looser than what I was used to yesterday. So uh, it was a little bit of a learning curve, but now we know for the next round uh, we'll go back, um, just make a little bit more strategies when we're coming out, clean up everything. And that's the whole th key about this frozen rush is to just be clean, make no mistakes, get to the next round. Bryce Menzies is doing just that, moving on to the next round. Okay, so we have two races in the books. Renazetta is in. He'll race against Rick Johnson a little bit later. And Bryce Menzies has moved on over Brian Deegan. These are two-lap single elimination quarterfinals. Our next matchup, you're going to get the veteran Rob McCachron against the youngest driver in the field, RJ Anderson. So this is a new and innovative event on the off-road racing side. But it doesn't matter if in the desert, in the snow, in the dirt. The one thing you always can count on is that Rob McCachron is going to be there battling for the win. Looking at a lot of the guys on the start list today, and you'll see a bunch of off-road renaissance men. But Rob Mack is not a multitasker. He's a specialist. The Las Vegas native doesn't race motorcycles or drive monster trucks. Rob races off-road. Very quickly, and quite successfully, actually. At the age of 47, McCachron has over 200 off-road wins. Stadium trucks, Baja, Pro 2, and he's not taking his foot off the gas anytime soon. Rob Mack hates losing, but he admittedly doesn't care too much for the cold either. It's really very similar to racing in the dirt with mud. You know, it's, it's wet, slippery. Um, you don't have 100% grip level. There's a drift going on through them, but you're just driving it. I think we adapt really quick and uh, adjust to it, and, and we just do it. Those are two very real realities he'll have to overcome if he wants to end up on the podium here in Maine. And this is interesting when you put a veteran like Rob Mack up against RJ Anderson. He's done some amazing things as a driver. He's gone viral plenty of times with his videos. The question is, can he adapt to one of these big trucks and be competitive today? At the ripe old age of 21, RJ Anderson has already won UTV, Buggy, and Pro 2 championships. But to most, he's best known for trying to break the internet with this.
Can he drive? You bet. Is he afraid to take risks? Nope. But it still remains to be seen whether our youngest competitor here today can do some damage against his much older, and some would say wiser, competitors. Ready to go racing here. So Rob Mack, very solid in this event last year, uh, just missed podium. He's pretty much fast on anything. Do you think RJ Anderson has got a shot at him here? Obviously a very intimidating presence with Rob Mack. Without being rude, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Mack was, yeah. was the fastest qualifier last year, mm -hmm. and he's a formidable competitor no matter what he's in. Now, RJ Anderson has a ton of talent. Don't count him out. But he's newer to the four-wheel drive, of course. So, I mean, with the skill that Rob has and the experience, I think it's going to be very hard for the youngster to overcome. But guess what? The youngster with the jump <laughs> right out of the gate. We'll see what happens as, as he goes to that left or the blue lane. Well, he's 21 years old. Maybe he's got the faster reaction time off the gate. So he's up front. Now, he's used to actually driving at times a Polaris Razor. He said that is four-wheel drive, but it's about... Uh, one ninth the power of these trucks. Almost got the crossover in action there. The left is a red lane. My my mistake there. The right, the blue lane, and Rob Mack drove really deep into that into that turn that we saw, and you saw a lot of fluff, a lot of loose snow as Rob Mack controls the course right now. He was on that short lane. Watch his technique, and he's clean all the way around. Carries speed all the way from the beginning of the turn. He doesn't have to do it twice. He goes through one time. Let's watch as now R.J. Anderson will come down to that turn. Is he clean? Does he have one fluid motion there as well? I don't think it was quite as clean as the Packard. It was pretty darn good. So here's Rob Mack. The guy's been at this for a long, long time. And as we said, one of the few trophies not on his mantle. This kid's going to try to take it away from him. It's going to be close when they come together. Oh, look at the big Boy. powder hit. And that's going to get, the story is, it's going to get looser and looser as we go. Two laps here in the quarterfinals. The semifinals will be four laps. So the course will get even more and more eaten up. And how close is this? Wow. RJ's in the mix, but McCacker with the lead, nose oh. down. Oh, McCacker. McCacker makes a mistake. That could open the door. Anderson is on the inside. If he can really drive it in there, but look at Rob Max switch to the left to try to block him. He closes off that lane, and what he was doing is he's putting RJ into that snow dust. He couldn't see where he was going, but still a Woo! great battle. That was a battle right to the line. Anderson gave him all he could handle, even got up to the quarter panel at the finish. McCacker's going to advance, and a little bit of the experience on display there. He made sure that door was shut, and there was nothing that 37 truck could see but snow. It's interesting because you saw in the LCQ, Renazetta held that outside line and railed it around the outside, but Rob Mack decided to chop down and take that line away, that inside line away where Renazetta showed that fast outside line. Well, we talked to Rob Mack yesterday, and he said, man, if you're second going into that turn, you're pretty much going to be blind as we watch RJ Anderson here. This is a mistake by McCacker, and it gave him an opportunity to win this. Absolutely, and it's part of that loose snow on top, and wow, whew, almost looked like a Smith grind from a skateboard there, and <laughs> just got up that the back wheel up and over that berm, and where it was interesting here is he could have held the outside line and tried to rail more speed possibly. He decided to chop down to the bottom and protect the bottom more or less or put RJ in that snow dust. And you cannot see the second place truck at all. You can't even see all. the truck, right. Yeah. And uh, they're actually worried at times. If you're in the lead and you crash in that corner, the guy behind might not even realize you stopped and could run right into you. That's how blind you are. But the McCacker gets kicked the wrong way in this final corner. And look at Anderson. Yeah, had he broke just a little more traction, I think RJ would have been right there. So you asked me at the beginning, do I think RJ has a chance to beat him? I say no. Well, Woo. evidently he did have a chance. And, you know, the veteran came out on top. But at this point, you can't predict really because the course is breaking down. The drivers may not even know where the loose snow is. Absolutely. Let's send it back down to Kelly. I think most people expected the veteran Rob McCachron to advance to that round relatively easily. You get the win, Rob, but it was tight. How impressed are you by the performance of that rookie Frozen Rush driver? You know, R RJ did great, you know, and I've known him ever since he was a baby. His dad, um, you know, helped me out a lot in my early career. And, you know, RJ wanted to win this bad. And, you know, I got a really bad start there. I think I, I parked in too much of the fluff. And uh, he got me on the start, and I got roosted out at the beginning there. And then once we got clear, I knew I had to make try to make up ground. And we, we drove as hard as we could. The, there's a lot of snow on top compared to what we were when we practiced here. 
Um, and it's a little bit different track. So, um, you know, we'll get back there and uh, maybe make some tunes on this Rockstar Energy Makita Tools. Um, BF Goodrich, man, I've been with them since 1991. What an incredible thing to come to the snow and uh, run up here. And thank you, Red Bull Frozen Rush. And I hopefully we'll, we'll take that trophy home, put that on my man when we get back. Well, you had a couple of moments out there near the end of that run, and now you're going to face Bryce Menzies in the next round, which is going to be a bit tougher. How do you make up for that in the next round? Well, it's really big. You know, this track is a lot, uh, lot more technical than last year. And it's really re all about not making mistakes. And, uh, you know, we, we got to clean it up, and I got to run a cleaner line and uh, not make any mistakes. It'll be a good run, I'm sure. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. All right, so some unpredictable racing here so far. We want you to compete as well. Let's see how smart you are. Let's see if you've been paying attention to us here in the booth at Red Bull Frozen Rush. Here's our second iPowWow question. How many spikes is in each of those 35-inch tall BF Goodrich racing tires that are out here? I did mention it earlier, so we'll see if you're paying attention. We'll give you multiple choice to make it a little bit easier. Be sure to vote and see if you guess correctly. Now, we're going to get a little more in-depth on what these tires are like. Kelly Stavis is down there to talk about them, but don't get too close. Remember, those tires are spikes. Kelly, let's send it to her. We're getting an up close look at these special spiked BF Goodrich tires. Now, this one tire alone has nearly 700 spikes in it, which makes it heavy, awkward, and actually a little bit dangerous. As a result, to change from your typical all terrain tires onto these spike tires, that change will take about three minutes. Now, if you can believe it, BF Goodrich will actually study the compound and tread pattern used in these specially designed tires for Frozen Rush to help create better all-terrain tires for your vehicle at home. Now, earlier, I gave you that number, about 700 spikes in this one tire alone. That means last year, nearly 22,000 spikes were used, and they lost not a single one. Ready for our next round, veteran Scott Douglas. He's got three different trucks in action, one that he's driving and then two others. So definitely a nice guy as far as building trucks for other people and hoping that they do well also. But you know when it's time to drop the hammer, he's the one that wants to come out on top. It's funny how most collections start. One day you start picking up things and after a little while, you've got an art or record collection. In the case of Scott Douglas, over 20 years ago, he started collecting off-road racing wings. And he's still looking to add more to that collection. Here comes Douglas, working the bottom on the Kakarin. I've got a library of experience that I can draw back through to different events and different, different ways of handling different things. That's where experience lies in it. As far as being old in this sport, I mean, these trucks, you take a beating in them and stuff, and, and there is, there's, some, there's a lot of physical ability, but you need to be mentally fit more than anything, and experience makes you mentally fit. Douglas will now take the lead. That's what it's all about, is winning and losing. And we give a warm welcome, warm, we're trying to help these guys out. Chad Horde hasn't raced this event before, but he is from Michigan, so at least he has experience hanging out in cold temperatures, and he's having a great time here this weekend. Chad Horde, one of the nicest drivers you'll ever meet. Adaptation, change, the process where an organism becomes better suited to its environment. For five-time Pro 2 world champion Chad Horde, it's a concept he'll have to master quickly here in Maine. Living in Michigan, Chad is no stranger to cold, but he wasn't here last year, and he doesn't have that experience on his otherwise solid resume. I'm kind of known as the nice guy. I'm not going to bump you. I'm not going to hit you, but that's going to probably have to start changing here in the future. Going from two-wheel drive to four, moving from dirt to snow, and transitioning from winning to, well, winning's the one thing Horde plans on keeping just the same. Chad Horde had it up on the door handle. You know, we're up against some, some pretty heavy hitters, and I think just me as a person that I, I'm gonna start getting more aggressive and just to start placing on the top. Douglas versus Horde. This is the four and five qualifier matchup, so this should be the closest of all the first round battles. And we've already had some close ones. Let's see how it goes. Horde getting the edge on the inside. They were thinking that that was the worst starting position, but it's actually worked out in his favor. 
It almost looked like he broke traction just a little bit, Horde did, as he went up to that first jump, or that he checked up just a little bit to set himself. And there, oh, a mistake, Horde going to the outside, and you see him having to swap back. So he's a little bit all over the place on that uphill rhythm section. A little mistake there on the entrance of the corner for Douglas, so yeah, they're double, both exchanging it. Yep. Right, good call, double turn in there for Douglas. And I think we're going to see more and more small mistakes as the, as the track gets broken down and you see more of that soft snow. Look at this, way to the outside is Horde. He was way off the track, so, you know, he's going to have to recalculate the way he's attacking because we've heard from the other drivers, there's a lot of soft snow on top and that's making it more slippery. They prefer more of an icy, hard condition and it's a little bit tougher drive here right now. So Horde having to play catch up. You see the front of the truck is missing some of the logos on the bumper because he nosed in to some of the moguls yesterday and ripped those logos off. He had a wild ride in qualifying and this is an equally wild one as he tries to learn Frozen Rush. Got a long way to go to try to catch up to Douglas who's railing out front. Oh, Douglas with his own problem there. He didn't go as far out as Horde did, but he definitely packed that front end into that top bull turn. And we'll see how it plays for him as he comes down. He's, see, he's a little bit more calculated. He's not attacking quite as much. And he's, oh, and well, he, was he there. still goes <laughs> off track just a bit. Those ruts can throw you around as well. And he's got a commanding lead at this point. Horde's trying to give it all he can. You can see him going, you know, tank swapper, so to speak, side to side there. But it's going to be all Scott Douglas, our oldest competitor at 54 years of age. Making it happen to the M's oil truck. Moving on to the next round is Scott Douglas. So that's his old truck. It's a 2008 model. So they had a lot his of magic. baby doll. Yeah, yeah the magic truck. <laughs> but they put a lot of the new components on, and he thinks it might actually be an advantage taking some of the old stuff, mixing it with some of the new. At least as far as this round goes, it worked out well. As for Chad Horde, I think we're really seeing the drivers who are new to this event, just like Deegan, RJ Anderson. It's making a big difference if they didn't have that experience. And we'll show you some of the mistakes that Horde made. Well, here's a good look at that top turn with Horde. He goes all the way, he goes wide because he had apexed early enough and he takes down the banners. Look at hey, him, he's off track there. <laughs> wow, great recovery. And he had to fight that coming all the way back down because he's not in the spots where he wants to be. And uh, Scott Douglas seemed a little bit more calculated here though. He did get offline, got up in that same spot that Rob McCacker did, not quite as far, but he had a commanding lead and I thought he did a solid job of taming it a bit at the top of the course. Yeah, Scott Douglas able to shrug off those hairy moments, reel that thing back in. And Here they were off the start. Horde getting the edge. And a little sideways there for Douglas. What a great shot. That's how close they were at the start, but at the end, it was all Scott Douglas. So our fastest qualifiers are living up to their billing in these uh, first rounds. Some of the runs have been very close, but we'll have to see as the faster drivers begin to face off and we'll have more laps also in the future rounds. It's going to get more and more exciting. And as you've mentioned, each time they put laps down on this track, it gets more and more chewed up, more and more powdery, more and more difficult. So that's going to make it fun to watch also. Let's send it down to Kelly with our round winner. A very excited Scott Douglas. You got beat off the line, but you're first to the checkered flag. These track conditions are very different from yesterday. How did you have to adjust your driving style throughout that run? They're way different. The, the snow is getting to be really soft already. and We've only done a few runs. I didn't practice a lot of starts yesterday. It kind of slipped my mind because I was so focused on the track, so focused on the track. So I, I spun the tires a little too hard on the start. I pedaled it. It finally got some traction. I thought I was in a big hole there for a minute. But, um, but I mean, the, the Amsoil uh, Borla exhaust truck just hooked up down here. And I tell you what, going up the hill for the second run, you are flying before you make the turn at the top. And I overdrove it and I thought, oh boy, I wish that berm was about 10 feet higher because I went right to the top. But uh, coming down, we kept it clean and uh, the guys did a great job. Uh, my, my crew is wonderful. They're doing fantastic and my spotter did a great job. So I'm super excited to bring this, uh, this Amzo Borla truck, you know, into round two. I mean, uh, the only bummer is, is I got to see who I'm racing because, you know, they only get tougher from here. But uh, I tell you what, I feel good. I'm on my game. Scott Douglas is pumped to be through to the second round here at Frozen Rush. Well, Scott Douglas mentions that it's only going to get tougher. We give you the updated bracket here, but he's got a little feather in his cap. The course is supposed to be getting slower with each run, but he has put in the fastest lap time of the day that last time around. So that should be interesting. He'll have to go against the winner of the next race, which will be Rick Johnson against Carl Renazetter. And as they say, 
they just keep eliminating some of the slower drivers, slower trucks until we get really against the best of the best. Absolutely. And a great uh, bracket setup. I'm really looking forward to this Johnson Renazetter setup. Well, yeah, RJ mentioned himself that because Renazetter and Todd Leduc both had truck problems yesterday, he didn't really know whatever driver he was going to race or how good they were going to go. If Renazetter gets that thing dialed in, he could beat him. Let's talk about RJ. 12 months now, he's been the guy that everyone knows they've got to beat here at Frozen Rush. He may be making his living by banging doors on the Lucas Oil Off-Road and Torque Championship Series today. But El Cajon, California's Ricky Johnson has always been a racer. Now Johnson dives to the inside. His charge tonight has been almost unbelievable. Rick Johnson, one of the great motocrossers of all time, announced his retirement at Saturday's Supercross. In all, he racked up seven AMA motocross and supercross championships. We're now the winningest rider in supercross history. How does that make you feel? Oh, it makes me feel unreal, you know? Before trading two wheels for four, and he kept right on winning. So besides those old moto trophies hanging around collecting dust, Johnson has freshened the collection up with wins from the Baja 1000, the Torque Pro 4 Championships, and the inaugural running of Red Bull Frozen Rush. And this is how you celebrate RJ style. I hate to go in third person, but Ricky Johnson has to race his best. If I race with Panache and I give 100%, I can walk away and be proud. So can the crowd pleaser they call RJ repeat his victory here in Maine? There's eight other racers who've respected what he's done before but they sure hope he doesn't win again. So Renazet are still working on the truck, but he could conceivably get much faster each time as they're working on it. They had carburetor problems and driveline problems yesterday. They get that thing to 100%. We don't really know how much he has in the tank, and I've got to think that RJ himself is maybe a little worried about this. Well, Renazetter has the advantage because he's already seen the semi-snow-covered course yeah. in the LCQ, so he may have a little bit of knowledge knowing what's coming up, or a little bit of advantage, I should say. But Ricky Johnson, your fastest qualifier, and I uh, definitely don't want to cut, count him out. Uh, you would definitely say he's a favorite in this situation. Carl has been struggling. Uh, through qualifying and practice with his truck. And the start has really been a problem for that number 17 truck. He's got a new transmission in there and uh, the manual transmission not able to get off the line as well as the manually shifted automatic that uh, RJ and most of the guys have in their truck. So the start could really tell the story. You would think that Johnson would get the jump here, but anything can happen on the snow. And a huge jump oh, for yeah, Johnson. There it is. Massive advantage. And that's going to put Carl right in the snow dust. And Carl's got to find that spot where he turns off, and he does it. Goes off to the left, the red line, there's on board. The blue lane, RJ with, uh, you can see the setup running a moto helmet, which of course he's very familiar with, seven times Supercross and Motocross champion. But he's running those snow goggles, so that's gonna give him the advantage when it comes to any kind of white out or delineation of lines. You can see just a little bit better, separate what is maybe the course from the sky. Yeah, a lot of the guys struggling with that. We had talked to Chad Hoard yesterday, and he said he realized his regular racing helmet and lens wasn't going to work for this. He went to a snowmobile shop and said, hey, guys, i got to buy something that works. What works for these conditions? So they're all kind of learning as they go. Rick Johnson strong on this first lap. But let's see if Renazator can make up time now that he'll have the short line the next time around. Oh, Ricky had to, had to reset up there. He got caught in a little bit of a snow drift, caught that inside line, swapping a bit up the hill. But, you know, honestly, Ricky looks like he had more of an advantage than some of the other trucks have had on that uh, second truck when they go out on that on the last run, on the last part of that lap. So right now I think Ricky has a clear advantage. Running the 48, his good buddy Jimmy Johnson. That's a tribute to him, of course, the six-time NASCAR Cup champion. And, uh, he was a protege of RJ back in the day, so he's running the number that has won a lot of races, and he's trying to do it himself here. Looking good so far. And look at that. Great usage of the line. We saw Horde and McCaffrey get off on top there. And, oh, getting a little sideways is Renazetter. But what I was saying is we've seen other drivers make mistakes there in that section. Ricky Johnson was really spot on, really nails, and he has a huge advantage here over Carl Renazetter. No upset in the making here. Rick Johnson advances a 139.8, but the fastest time in that first round is going to go to Scott Douglas. So throw another name in the mix to potentially win this thing. Douglas, the quickest of anyone through the first round. 
Well, we knew this first round matchup between Rick Johnson and Carl Renazetter would really come down to how far Renazetter could advance his truck from qualifying to now off the start. He didn't advance it enough. Still struggling off the line with that all new drive line. And Rick Johnson gets a big early lead. Yeah, just a massive adja advantage for Ricky. I mean, it looked like he had great traction, great reaction. And, you know, just Carl, you just can't look. You can't even see him. So nope. you got to imagine what he's seeing from the driver's seat. Yeah, nothing, basically. So the uh, Lucas Oil truck is eliminated. The Red Bull truck moves on. Rick Johnson is with Kelly Stavist. And Ricky is the last of the drivers to advance through to the second round. So you had a little time to either see the guys go ahead of you or hear about the track conditions. What did you learn that helped you in, in that run? Well, I was just watching everybody, and uh, I'm telling you, the track is getting beat up. So it is becoming an unbelievable off-road race. This is a combination of desert and short course because these 900 horsepower motors and these BF Goodrich tires with the spikes are just too, chewing this thing up. So after two more rounds, the main event is going to be hellacious. So I would just want to thank Red Bull, KMC, Replay HD, and, you know, and all those guys for helping me out to get here. So. I'm into the semis. I got one more run before. I, I don't know who I go against, either Rob or, or Bryce. Both those guys are great champions, so hope I see you there. Well, first up for Ricky will be Scott Douglas, who had the fastest time in the first round. Okay, so we got a round in the books. First time I ever saw trucks race side by side here at Frozen Rush, and we literally were side by side in a lot of spots, and we're gonna add more laps and some faster drivers. This is only gonna get better and better. Absolutely, and when you think about it, the top four qualifiers are the four that have moved on, but the brackets are incredibly tough. Uh, Ricky Johnson against Scott Douglas, and the one thing about Scott Douglas was that he looked really maybe the smoothest out of all the drivers, and that's what played out in that time that he put down the 138.6. But that set, the, the other matchup with McCachron and Menzies, I mean, the uh, elder statesman versus the young gun, formerly both on the same team. I mean, it's a really interesting matchup for me. I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, who has probably been the best of desert racing, uh, so to speak, with Rob McCachron and the new uh, best of desert racing, possibly in Bryce Menzies. Yeah, guy really coming into his own here, but you know, Rob Mack doesn't want to just hand any trophies. <laughs> and over Rob to Mack's him. not handing anything to anybody, and neither is Ricky Johnson or Scott Douglas. It's going to be really exciting. Yeah, I remember Johnson is in a Scott Douglas truck and will be racing against Scott Douglas. So there's so many things to think about when you come here, not only the rivalries, but the things that they have to do to prepare themselves and the vehicles to come race here in the snow. This, this is like going to the moon. It's completely different. You know, off-road racing was born in the desert. It's been tuned in the desert. Everything that we know about these trucks is in the desert. For myself, I'm gonna try not to overthink it. But I'm gonna try to just run my normal stuff and put on a couple layers of underwear and probably just run a moto helmet with snow goggles because once you lens fogs, it's over. But we added, um, you know, helmet blower that blew a lot of air inside my helmet, and we had no problem whatsoever. I'm running a, an Oakley ski goggle, so it's got a thermal lens and everything like that, a motocross style helmet with a Nomax hood sock, but with also a ski mask on top of that. I went and spent like $500 at Bass Pro Shop just getting thermals and then jackets and all this stuff. If I'm gonna go out here, I'm not gonna come out here and freeze. I don't know, I, I didn't really pack anything differently other than just my mindset. I grew up in the snow, so really that's, for me, is something I'm used to. I was born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm definitely a desert rat. Us Cali boys, oh, no, I'm not built for this. I mean, I've grown up on the Northwoods as far as, you know, me going as fast as I can on that track, and oh my gosh, here comes a snow cloud, I gotta back out of it. I'm not backing out of it. Uh, we got out there to the semi, and we're getting the trucks all unloaded, and I noticed I couldn't hardly breathe through my nose that the, my boogers were freezing inside my nose. <laughs> I prefer the warmer weather. It's definitely cold. If you've come here before, you got your notes that you learned from last time and you're making those adjustments. We came up with uh, heating pads around all the coolers to heat up the oil for the engine, things to heat up the shocks. You know, the new guys like Brian Deegan and Chad Ward and RJ Anderson, they're not going to know that because they've never been here. Good people aren't going to tell me everything. You know, I came here and no one's going to give me too many tips. I get it. I don't even know if they think I'm even going to be a threat, to tell you the truth. We put a seat heater in just for this race, but we got the motor sitting right next to us. And the adrenaline runs, rushes through you, and you don't even know what the temperature is out there. Pain's temporary glories forever, right? <laughs> Give a little review here of the racing format at Frozen Rush. It was already pretty exciting in those quarterfinals, but now we go to the semis. We're going to take another 
untraveled road. We're going to do four laps now for the first time ever in Frozen Rush head-to-head. -head. And what a battle we have brewing between two huge names, Bryce Menzies, Rob Mack. This is the irresistible force and the immovable object against each other. <laughs> Absolutely. And the young gun, Bryce Menzies, I mean, it's hard to pick against him. He's got, you know, so much skill and so many accolades already in his young career. But Rob McCachron, one of the winningest drivers in our sport. You good folks can play along as well. Who do you think is going to win? Go to redbull.tv slash vote and pick Menzies or McCachron. Which one do you think is going to take this round? You picked Rob Mack already. I did, and I'm sticking with it. Now, the hard part here, of course, the faster qualifier gets the pick of the lane. So Menzies, by way of being that faster qualifier in the second position over third qualifier, McCachron picks that right blue lane to start with. Okay, so you pick Rob Mack as a potential dark horse at the beginning of the show. So I'll go with Menzies to win this one, and we'll see who comes out on top. And you folks can vote at home if you're watching along with us and take your pick. And uh, about one second was the difference. Menzies a second quicker than Rob Mack in their previous round run, but I don't know how much that means. This course is so torn up, one mistake changes it all. It doesn't necessarily mean McCachron isn't as fast. Right, well, the one mistake McCachron had, he had to really reel it back in. And so we'll see, this, this is gonna be really about not making mistakes as this course continues to break down, the ruts develop, big snow holes. We're about to go racing here for our first semi. Nice start for Menzies, leaving McCachron behind. And all the drivers seem to think that right side is oh. better launch pad, you saw it. And that's what McCachron could see right there. That was a quick onboard of his vision. So you see Menzies now taking to the track, making more snow dust for McCachron as Huge the lines, lines combine. Man, shot out of the cannon is Menzies right now. So a big advantage early. We'll see if McCachron is obviously digging hard right now, can make it up. McCachron, that longer line, he's got to go all the way up to the top. Menzies all the way, already on his way back down. So this will complete the one Whoa. of the four laps. Look how look how rutted it is already from on board with Menzies' truck. You can see it, how it undulates. The truck kind of moves up and down as he's drifting sideways. Now he's got the short uh, line, the technical corner. It's going to be a little bit quicker around the high side for Rob Mack once he gets into the other lane, but he still hasn't gotten to the finish line left. That first lap was phenomenal for Menzies. McCacker's got his work cut out for him now. He's really gonna have to hustle in this second half. And then remember, we'll do two more laps after it, but uh, it's hard times being put down right now by Menzies. It's gonna be hard to catch up. Bryce is a great talent and being on his team in 2010, uh, it was great to be able to watch the interaction with it. Oh, and oh. There, now the same problem that Rob Mack had in his quarterfinal. Menzies has, he reels it back in. And as I was saying, the relationship between Bryce and his father, uh, Steve, and the entire family there at Menzies, they work so great together. Everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's happy. They're working towards one common goal. And after the two laps where they would be normally closer together, Rob Mack is a bit back. Yeah, absolutely. So he said that hard first lap throw down by Menzies is going to make him tough to catch. We'll see if McCachron has got any magic up his sleeve, or could it be a mistake by Menzies that opens it up? Wow, great drifting that corner, the apex on the inside there. Really looked great carrying that front wheel for Menzies. He got a little wide on the exit, but I don't think it cost him any time whatsoever. McCacker hit this downhill section. He told us yesterday that he thought he'd actually be better off just kind of drive the truck through these gates instead of sliding it because it's so easy to over rotate. And on the downhill, it's very hard to catch once you lose it. All right, three laps down, one to go. Menzies just has to avoid the unforced error. No pressure really being applied at the moment. Yeah, at this point, it looks like Bryce has a clean run on his hands. But again, with the, the two different tracks, you're not really sure but you would think that Rob would be in the picture there more or less. Now Rob running away to the top. Um, again, Bryce has the longer line this time. As you can see him working, he's back on the downhill now. Somewhere down here in the middle is where Rob should intersect and make it a close race, but it looks like Rob's a little further back than we've seen in some of the other races. Well, this is a real statement for Menzies if he can hold on here and he even avoids getting into the berm this time. We expected this to be a wheel-to-wheel -wheel duel between two of the biggest names in off-road, but Bryce Menzies is going to walk off with it. No real challenge from McCachron, and Menzies is really staking a claim to this that he could be the driver to beat today at Frozen Rush. Big win for the number seven. Wow, that was impressive. Well, a tough break for Rob McCachron. Interesting though, Menzies will have, would have the better pick over Douglas.
but Johnson will have the premier pick if he advances over Douglas, which is will be our next semifinal. Five seconds, the margin of victory. This is where it got a little crazy, though, for the leader. Wow, he got both wheels up on top of that edge and uh, really did a great job reeling it back in. And we'll show you what these uh, jumps are like here for him. It's a crossover. It's the truck just foot, flying yeah. great. Looks looks really, I mean, the setup is really good for Bryce, and he, he looks super dialed in. No, no mistakes that we really saw other than he it looked like he attacked too much into that gate section and, and had to drift back over and got on top of that berm. And for you folks that might have joined us for the show last year, last year you took a five-second penalty if you clipped one of those flags. This year they're basically saying keep it on the track and you're good. So no penalties for hitting those gates this time that's, around. That's the one I really liked right there, that drift carrying that front tire up. He went a little wide. You see him hit the berm and blow it a little bit. That's going to cost him some speed possibly, but Bryce all the way around looked pretty solid. The rear end steps out a bit. You can see how deep that snow is already. It's only going to get worse as we add more laps. Bryce Menzies taking a win, and we'll send it back down to Kelly. The young gun, Bryce Menzies, takes down the off-road racing legend, Rob McCachron. It was a pretty easy win there, Bryce. What sort of a statement have you made as you head into the finals? Uh, you know, it just shows our team's working really hard, and... Uh... Man, this course is getting so chewed up, so hard to get around. But uh, my main goal was just to get to the finals. And uh, last year we came up a little short. We got third. But uh, so much fun out here. I'm having a blast ripping this thing around the snow. It's incredible. All the fans, thank you guys for coming out. I got to thank Red Bull, KMC Wheels, GoPro, Rigid Industries, Lights for leading me the way. Um, everybody else that helps me out, it, this is just an unbelievable event. Seems like everyone says the key is no mistakes, but looks like it's sort of inevitable now with the track conditions. Yeah, I mean, with the four-lap run, I mean, it, the, tr the track is getting so torn up, and when we get to the final, we're doing six. So uh, the biggest thing is just to get through, try to make as less mistakes as you can, but uh, just having a blast, man. These BFG tires with these studs are ripping up this trail. All right, Bryce Menzies is through to the final round. He'll face either his teammate Ricky Johnson or Scott Douglas. Man, that was an impressive performance by Bryce Menzies, especially considering, as you've been talking about and the drivers have too, the course is supposed to just keep getting worse, but he did all right on it. There's a good look at some ruts going up off one of the jumps and uh, look at the course. This is where some of the mistakes have been made. You can see how deep it is. It actually looks like two track ruts and then like almost like a big silt patty in the middle, middle there, like a soft spot. And uh, take a look at the ruts that are developing on the start line a few inches down and you're really in like a slot car track for a second as you get going. Here's your matchup, Scott Douglas and Ricky Johnson. Johnson is in a Scott Douglas built truck, actually newer than the one Douglas is in, but he likes his old 2008 model. Like we said, he's put some new parts on it. He feels that that thing can win, and he was a second quicker than Ricky in their lap times of the first round. For whatever that's worth, the track gonna be totally different here. We'll have on boards, by the way, with both of them. There's Johnson, who just saw what it was like inside the cab with Douglas. This one's going to be tough to pick, and they've also got to be thinking about over their shoulder those runs that Bryce Menzies put down. Even if they do advance, it's going to be tough to beat in the final. Absolutely. And they're both inching forward just a bit as we're set <laughs> to go. There is a five second penalty, by the way, if you do jump the start. Man, Johnson has been killer on the reaction time, but Douglas hooks up and beats him over the first jump. Ricky has a bit of correction there. Douglas very fast on that left turn as he heads off into that, that left side lane. Ah, oh, the truck's starting to kick left to right on Douglas. That's going to cost him. I think he would have actually been a little bit ahead, but those mistakes might have been advantage Johnson, but then he makes an error. He does make a small error there. Johnson had to double turn that, and then he had to miss the backside of that jump just a little bit. So even if it's just a millisecond of a correction, it takes, it takes a half second, and that leads into a half second onto the next area as well because you have to reel it back in and get yourself back into that smooth frame of racing that section. Douglas looks darn fast on that downhill. Johnson has already completed the first lap, but remember, that was the short line. So we'll see how it turns out at the end of this one. They could be wheel to wheel. Here's Johnson over the big tabletop uphill. They got a lot of air over that yesterday. The track just too darn rough for it now. Yeah, you can see the ruts really developing there quite a bit. Now each driver has a spotter as well, so they can give them information about the track that they can see, or if they happen to be near a monitor, uh, able to tell them what they see through the monitor. 
Johnson had that thing really oh, thrown around. He mistake. is nearly off the track. Yeah, he was. He was. The back of the truck was off the track, and there he straightens out that section. He's trying to find traction. He's got the lead on Douglas. Still has Douglas, but another mistake from Johnson. Oh. Douglas, who goes completely sideways. Did he save it? Yes, he did. He created his own snow blind there. So they're going to be chasing each other through this final corner. We're halfway through. Two laps down, two laps to go. Ricky far to the outside, got into that berm. That'll cut a little bit of speed off, but they're pretty close together, although Douglas is in that snow blind situation. So they're halfway through, and that's exciting racing. I mean, we see mistakes from both drivers. That's how hard they're pushing, but that's also how much the course is deteriorating. Well, Johnson told me yesterday, he goes, you know how scheme works. Oh, Johnson a little bit slow oh, out of that corner. It did look like he was off for a second, didn't it? Yeah. Well, Johnson told me yesterday, he goes, you know what it's like skiing when you're in a downhill, the thing wants to go straight. They don't want to stop and turn, whether on skis, a snowboard, or in a 4,000-pound truck, and he almost threw it away. Is that Douglas? Oh, Douglas, Douglas crashed. Oh. Wow. Douglas has crashed into the uh, aptly named snow fence. And Johnson has got an easy run here on his final go around. So, Douglas get a little souvenir here. So now Ricky Johnson's spotter would have told him that Douglas had a big mistake. And so now Ricky knows that he can check up a little bit. He doesn't have to risk the truck. Um, Douglas, on the other hand, really needs to go as fast as humanly possible. But I think at this point, if you have a spin out like that, you're you're out of contention unless there's a major mistake made when there's no pressure on Ricky Johnson. And Ricky Johnson, after all the Supercross and Motocross and off-road uh, wins, I don't think he's going to make a mistake in that situation. Actually, it looks like RJ is definitely taking something off here, cruising home in this final lap. But even with that, if you're not on the gas through some of those downhill jumps, the truck starts to kick. He almost threw it away, too. Sometimes when you slow down, it's harder to drive because you're not used to what it's going to do in those particular sections. You're Final corner. Focused. Sorry to cut you off there, but Rick Johnson's got this one tucked away. As we said earlier, he's running the 48. Tribute to his buddy Jimmy Johnson and NASCAR. And just like JJ likes to do another victory, taking that car now to the finals. Here is the seven of Douglas comes across. That would have been. A phenomenal battle downhill into that final corner, but unfortunately we never got to see it because of a mistake from Douglas. He was absolutely pushing with all he had. Definitely a couple of mistakes from both drivers and uh, sets up a heads up between Menzies and Johnson. But look at this start. Douglas not only got the start, but he moves over in front of him to try to snowblind him. But look, there wasn't really that much roost. But watch as he makes the turn. Maybe the roost to get him. No, Johnson's able to miss on the outside and just a complete exchange of mistakes in this run. Look at Johnson. We saw from the inside him sawing at the wheel. He was, I don't know how he didn't go all the way around. And it was really risky for him to keep driving it forward. I'm not even sure as we take a look. Johnson hit a big snow section there. This is Douglas. Remember, sorry, he ends Douglas. up off the track, and here's how it happened. Bre he broke traction to the outside. He tries to go ahead and do a complete revolution 360 by staying on the throttle. And it didn't pay off for him as he got up in that snow fence. And here's the kick. Ricky Johnson in the 48 had to collect that truck back up. What's the key to collecting it? Floor it? <laughs> well, you, you have to steer into it, but not oversteer and get into the throttle to straighten the truck out with the four-wheel drive. Those front wheels can't pull it straight again. Hard to believe that when you're out of control, the fastest way to fix it is by getting on the gas. And here we go. It was very close at one point, but Douglas, that spin, he wasn't able to stay that close right to the end. And let's send it down to Kelly with our winner. Well, it wasn't always pretty, but Ricky Johnson gets a win and will be through to the finals to defend his Frozen Rush title. I said it wasn't always pretty. How aware were you of where Scott Douglas was on course? Well, I had my son Luke Johnson spotting for me, and he did a great job. Let me know. I made a big mistake that uh, second lap. Lost my beanie. Sorry, Red Bull. Um, Lost, I, I went off the track and had to gather back up, but, but I think Scott made the same mistake later on. So uh, this track is getting gnarly, man. It, it's getting really, really rough, way rougher than last year, way more technical than last year. I watched Bryce swap a little bit, figured it out the last lap. He had a great run, and uh, here we are, me and him going at it in the main. Red Bull versus Red Bull in the finals. Couldn't ask for much more here at Frozen Rush. So Rick Johnson and Bryce Menzies get what they want. They wanted to face off against each other in the finals. That's good for both of them, obviously, to get there. But now they're going to have to go from friends to enemies. We'll give you the full bracket. This is everything we've seen so far here at Frozen Rush. Renazator beats LaDuke in the LCQ to go against Johnson. Douglas beats Horde. 
And uh, Johnson beat Douglas. We just saw that one. Menzies coming out on top of McCachran. Now McCachran and Douglas are going to face off. We're not done racing there. They will be in the trophy race to determine who finishes third. Speaking of the trophy race, they are on the line. We'll give you the format for that. It's once again a four lap race. And uh, the coin toss determines lane choice. That's interesting because uh, McCachran, by the way, had the faster time, not only the, over Douglas in the last round, but also was faster than Rick Johnson, who beat Douglas. So although McCachran maybe didn't look like he was on his game because Menzies beat him by a pretty good margin, he was actually the second quickest of the four drivers in the semis. And we didn't see a lot of mistakes from McCachran. We saw mistakes from Ricky and from uh, Scott Douglas. Scott obviously winning the coin toss, I would guess. I don't have that information, but choosing that outside line every time the faster qualifier has chosen that outside line. So it's time to go racing. This is the trophy race. So basically, the two drivers that didn't make the final will race for that third place accolade. And uh, it's always nicer to be on the podium than not. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's basically you get nothing or you get something quite valuable. So someone's going to be really disappointed at the end of this one. It'd be so hard to pick a winner. And it is wheel to wheel right off the line. A little bit better jump so that the left side, which is not supposed to work on the start, sure did for Rob McCachran. And Matt got a good jump, and then it looked like he hit like a snow berm there from the from the final turn. And uh, I saw him working that section. Oh, having to go through that snow oh. dust has got to be brutal. Very powdery through this corner here. Oh, perfect timing over the jump. So you see McCacker go flying over the top. Now he's going to hang this left-hand turn. This led to the undoing of several drivers earlier today. Good job by McCacker here. And there's a good look at Douglas setting up for that final bowl turn. Big lead for Douglas right now. But remember, it's a four lapper. He has a short line this time. We'll see how much ground. Boy, that truck was not straight in any part of the straightaway. See how much ground McCacker can make up due to those mistakes and then clipping one of the flags. So Douglas, not exactly smooth, but definitely effective. He looked quick there as we get a good look at McCacker and, and he, he's swapping back and forth just a little bit as well. Big run up to the top here. Wow, the ruts have really developed. You can see him there from the onboard, and then these really soft powdery corners are tough to navigate. He goes out to the outside, hits the berm just a little bit there, and uh, they're close. This yeah. is much closer than we've seen in the last couple. And we're only halfway through. We're gonna run each lane again. Douglas with a slight edge over McCachran, and he switches over to the inside to block him, and why not throw a little snow in his face as well? It'll be interesting to see what kind of a difference that makes. They were pretty close coming into the corner. We'll see if Douglas has a bigger lead now. He does it. McCachran, through the snow and all, stays right with him. And a big swap from Douglas. So he got traction and threw him back the other way off the face of that jump. Again, it's the battle for the podium. Douglas pushed. He hits the berm. He starts to push there. And he hits the outside. Almost hits the inside as well. That could be the opening that McCacker needs. Now this corner, again, very, very difficult. Get the truck turned all the way around, and then it's downhill. And as McCacker told us yesterday, this is a little bit different than what they're used to. You don't normally take corners and jumps downhill the whole way. I'm just watching that line. McCacker looked very clean in there. He didn't, he didn't come off one of the edges. He didn't swap. Just trying to, it looks like he's trying to drive a smart, clean line through there. So Douglas has completed it. He's got one lap to go. McCachran looks like he's far behind now, but he will have the short run on this final lap. Let's see if he can come from behind. Wow, it's just a, amazing how much snow. Oh, and a mistake for Douglas. Yeah. He pushes really far out into that berm, gets into the soft stuff. We'll see if it costs him as they're going to come back together going to be pretty close. There's McCacker, yeah. as you saw on the outside. And, and McCacker's oh, on the inside. Oh, Douglas oh. is into his lane. Oh, and he he runs out into McCacker's lane, but McCacker still has the edge on him. McCacker won't back down. He got the inside. He's, He's going to wrestle the lane away from Douglas in the final corner. He, Douglas oh. trying to come back to the inside. Not going to happen. And a come from behind effort for the trophy. Rob McCacker takes third, and our first run we really saw here today with him going back and forth. Douglas had it at one point. I don't know if he would have taken on a penalty for essentially going into McCacker's lane, but it doesn't matter. McCacker beats him anyway. Wow. Well, what I saw there was McCacker 
was, kept, was smart enough to stay in the throttle to race up alongside Douglas. Douglas had to check up a little bit to straighten out the truck, and McCachran's able to run down the side of him. I, I'm looking forward to seeing that as McCachran heads to uh, the interview area. There's a good look at the truck, and he did a great job. What he did is he held that inside line and he, and he held it on deeper, blocking, keeping Douglas from getting to him there. Here's the push you were talking about. So he has to turn. He had to redirect there, gets to that outside. And now, watching, this is when they went out on lap three, if I'm not mistaken. They were pretty close. Douglas had a bit of an advantage. You can see the roost that McCachron has to go through. Never a pleasant thing. And then it would come down to that final downhill. Douglas had the lead, however, it was a slalom section and that's what ultimately cost him. See, he was looking good at this point where the truck was flying. But once he turned around and went back down the hill, the mistakes started to come into play. And that's what allowed McCachran here to get on the inside in the last corner. McCachran holds it on, he's trying to make a run. Douglas is still trying to spool back up. And McCachran just controlled the inside of that turn. He just held it on a little longer, took Douglas a little deeper, and had the line on the inside. And it, once that control was established there, it was all him. I like how McCacker, and I think he just sent it in last corner and said, hey, there's a big snow berm on the outside. That'll hold. And he goes on to take third. Let's send it to Kelly. After a come from behind win for Rob McCacker, he'll pick up his first Frozen Rush trophy. But man, that was tight. How'd you get around Scott Douglas there at the end? Well, you know, uh, Scott had lane choice. We did a flip there, and I lost the lane choice. And I knew that left lane I didn't like. And as soon as he got me off the start, you know, I got the snow dust here. I got the snow dust up ahead. And I was just doing everything I could to try to get through. And when we came through after the first two laps, um, you know, he had me. And I knew I had to go for it and do everything we could with this Rockstar Energy Makita Power Tools truck. And, uh, you know, BF Gooders tires, you know, there's 700 spikes in these tires. Who Whoever would have thought we'd have been here, or I'd have been here, any of us, with an off-road truck with 900 horsepower, uh, you know, playing in the snow. But it's great, and I got to thank, uh, you know, the Frozen Rust people for putting it on, and we're, we're really happy to make the podium and collect one of those nice uh, Red Bull Frozen Rust trophies. We've seen some awesome action out here today. What has it been like this year racing head to head against these guys? No, it's incredible, you know, to have, you know, Ricky Johnson, Bryce Menzies, Carl Renazetta, Brian Deegan, you know, you have some of the best of the best. Every person that's here running today has multiple championships, whether they're older or younger. Um, they all got multiple championships and a lot of race wins under their belt. So it's definitely rewarding to be here and, uh, you know, taking a third spot, you know, we'll take it. We'd like to be on the top spot, but uh, at least we got to get away with that. The legend, Rob McCachran, will take home third place here at Frozen Rush. Well, we now have a perfect matchup for the finals. Congratulations to Rob McCacken for getting that third place trophy. So the only thing we have left to determine is the finals and who's going to win it. Bryce Menzies against Rick Johnson. It's teacher versus student. Johnson was once brought on board the Menzies Motorsports team to help teach Bryce to drive. And here they are now meeting for this Frozen Rush trophy. Here's some highlights as we have our road to the finals. McCachran put in a great run up against Menzies. Actually, the second fastest time of any of our final four. Menzies are just that much quicker. He looked really strong. And we've seen a lot of people making small mistakes. There was a mistake for Bryce as he stepped out, but he's able to reel it back in. And that's one thing we're going to be looking for in the final coming up is who makes the least amount of mistakes. And a lot of people making a mistake on that downhill on that right line and getting shot into the left line. Then you had Rick Johnson against Scott Douglas, and Douglas actually led Johnson off the line. And you mentioned mistakes. This run was full of them. As they started pushing each other, they started pushing their trucks, they started finding the limits of this track, and they were all over it. That one swap from RJ was not the biggest mistake from him, and he and Scott Douglas both made rotational errors on the track. Yeah, at one point, they were almost flipped all the way around with Johnson, and uh, Douglas did go all the way around. So Douglas lost to Johnson there, and then it was a trophy race between he and McCachran to determine third, and this is about as close as it can get. They were drag racing into the final corner. McCachran would come out on top. Look at how close this is in the last turn. Awesome racing to determine our third place finisher here at Red Bull Fo Frozen Rush. So McCachran gets Douglas. Every position has now been established in the bracket, except, of course, the big one going for the gold, Ricky Johnson against Bryce Menzies. And by the way, they were the fastest two drivers in qualifying. They're the fastest two drivers in practice, and they are meeting in the finals. Obvious question now to ask you in our iPowwow. Who do you think is going to win here in the final? You can vote. RedBoltTV.com slash vote. RJ versus Bryce.
this is going to be a hard one to call. I think Bryce definitely quicker the last couple times they're out on the track. But like you said, man, mistakes can make all the difference. Well, less mistakes from Bryce. I, mm -hmm. I mean, we saw that one transfer over onto the on the sand berm on the downhill, but Ricky had that big over rotation. So less mistakes so far with Bryce. He looks fast and uh, both look fast. But it's, again, mitigating the mistakes. Six laps. We've never done six laps here at Frozen Rush. We did four in the previous round. And as I mentioned, this is teacher versus student. Rick Johnson drove for the Mantis Motorsports team for several years. But uh, Bryce is going to take over the two- and four-wheel drive operation for 2015. There is no longer a spot for Johnson on that team. So Johnson right now doesn't have a deal uh, for next year. He would still like to drive if something's out there. But uh, he's not mad about it. He knows that Bryce is an up-and-coming talent. And why not put him behind the wheel? Deal about the two and four wheel drive trucks next year. So who knows the next time we might see these two race each other. Well, we know that we're going to see Ricky Johnson at the Ultra Four at the King of the Hammers is something mm -hmm. he's got going on. Plus his desert racing just hasn't secured something in short course. I expect with his talent level and his ability, uh, both as a thinking driver, that he'll be a good addition to someone's team. I'm sure someone will pick him up. But Bryce is definitely on a rocket ship right now. I mean, he has been really dominant in so many different forms of off-road racing. And I, I think the Pro 4 is going to fit him just perfectly. And they're both in Pro 4 style trucks right now. Johnson backing down. And by the way, folks, uh, we got an update here. Johnson was actually not happy about uh, the line he had picked here in the start, so he's going to back it up and reset. There was a coin flip, by the way, to determine uh, start selection in this final. And Bryce did win the coin flip, and it's going to be very difficult to tell the two trucks apart, both with the red front lights there and very similar coloring. Uh, I think that really the best way to differentiate coming on is the yellow Menzies across the top of uh, Bryce's truck. Uh, that's a bit of a different look from the front. You got those big front fenders that all those Scott Douglas trucks yeah, have. That's true. Good point. Uh, uh, Johnson has on the right side of your screen, the, the driver's left. So. They're locked and loaded. They were talking trash to each other all day long, friendly as they're pitted right next to each other in our indoor and heated pits here. What happened to the indoor and heated announce booth? I know, it didn't, didn't really come together. We're braving the elements just like everyone else. It's not usually the way I do it. I'm usually in the air conditioning when it's hot out. This is a uh, turnabout as fair play. You folks ready? Final round, Bryce Menzies, Rick Johnson, teacher versus student, and two fairly equally matched trucks too. Here we go, the finals. Red Bull Frozen Rush. Ricky with the jump in the number 48 in contact. Bryce gets into the back of him, but I think that was maybe more Ricky moving over in front of Bryce. And oh, a little check up there. Ricky had to check his speed going into that chicane. He might have turned in a little too early. But if anyone followed the career of Rick Johnson, both on two wheels and four wheels, you know he's a competitor. Yes, men's, he's had quicker times throughout today's bracket racing. But RJ oh, will step oh, huge up. mistake. Whoa. Huge mistake. I said he was going to step up a little bit too far there, stepped out of line, and now he's got to reel it back in and make up a lot of ground. It looked like what happened is, it looked like he just kind of rebounded weird when he landed. It, it just, the truck just kind of spun out from underneath him. So when he landed it, the truck landed hard, rebounded it, and under, under uh, acceleration just kind of spun out from underneath him. Does that not tell you the kind of power they have? He spun going uphill on a ski slope. <laughs> So Johnson's got a lot of ground to make up. Bryce Menzies has already come through the finish line to complete one of the six laps. We'll show you what it's like on board here with Menzies. Clear track, no snow dust to deal with. This is his race to lose, cannot make a mistake. Well, we talked about the mitigating the mistakes, not making them. And now Bryce knows through his spotter that Ricky's had a problem. And so now I, I would assume that Bryce is going to go pretty darn quick because Ricky wasn't that far out of it. But at the same time, Bryce knows he should have a bit. And you can see there, it looks like about uh, maybe 12 seconds or a little less than that of the gap back to Ricky. We'll get that time here as we split after they've done both lanes one time each. We'll see if it's manageable here. Remember, we've never gone this many laps before, so that could potentially change things a lot. Johnson just has to keep on digging. Well, it looked like a, a big gap, but it really isn't that much. I mean, he, no. he's pretty close there. Yeah, he might have been quicker besides the mistake. And like I said earlier, Rick Johnson is not the kind of guy that's going to give up. He is a competitor. And here at Bryce, where Ricky had his problems, <laughs> I'm sorry, that was Ricky again. <laughs> now we're back to that, being able to call the different trucks. And so this is Ricky coming down the hill. This is downhill 
for Johnson. He's got to be perfect through here. Menzies has once again crossed the finish line. He's halfway there in a six-lap race. Johnson with the hammer down. He's got nothing to lose at this point. He's going to uncork it here in this big final corner. Beautiful Rich, job. Oh, holds it way down on the bottom. Nice job using the bottom of the track. Maybe some better traction there because the outside is where it's been pushed out to and where everybody's been sliding out and breaking that edge down. And so Ricky trying to use that bottom for traction. And here's Johnson trying to find Bryce Menzies in the distance. Here is your leader in the number seven. All because of that one mistake, the beginning of lap one, Menzies has this gap. And we're wondering, ah, it's about the same. Johnson has maybe inched up on him a little bit from the last time they did this. We are two thirds of the way through. Four laps will be about to be completed right now. Can Johnson find something special? Can Menzies deal with the pressure and avoid the mistake? It really isn't that far back. It's no. just a, a medium sized mistake for Bryce. But that's the thing is you don't see Bryce make a lot of mistakes. You know, he's he's usually really spot on. I call it B money because his name is Bryce for the B and money because he's money behind the steering wheel. And he is just he is an amazing talent. Well, Rick Johnson even saying yesterday, you know, he can't feel bad about having to give up a ride to the guy who really might be the guy in off road racing overall over the next couple of years. Menzies really coming into his own now and he might just add this Red Bull Frozen, Frozen Rush trophy to his collection. But Johnson still going fast. One lap to go for a leader. Can Johnson dig down deep and get him? He will have the shorter run the next time around. So Ricky again trying to get down on that bottom. You can see, I see some dirt. Yeah, I see a little dirt exposing itself where the course has been carved out. There's Ricky coming across, heading out on his last lap. But as we shift gears, this is Bryce on the downhill on the homeward bound straightaway. Well, kind of straightaway. And look at him being very, <laughs> very precise, keeping it right in line, not throwing the tires out, not throwing it sideways, just driving through that chicane. And here's where he had problems before. No problem at all. One more big jump. And uh, he looks smooth. And Johnson was able to close it up every time we saw them in that section, but he's not going to be able to overcome that mistake on lap one. That will ultimately make the difference. A perfect drive on all six laps, and Bryce Menzies wins Frozen Rush 2015. And they're going to do some celebrating here. You talk about snow dust. <laughs> just take our word for it because you can't see anything on your screen. They're just to the right of ours in the tower here. Johnson is going to do some donuts here in the snow. That's Snow Angels with four wheel drive. Hey, why not blow it out, guys? <laughs> As a fan, I had to just stop and watch for a second. It's awesome. Uh, and you know, Johnson did not go down without swinging, did everything he could to try to make up that ground. And uh, we're going to show you where this thing ultimately came undone. Meanwhile, Bryce Menzies is jumping on the roof of his truck. The crowd's cheering. Here's Johnson getting sideways. And he really, he just got crossed up on the jump. I was wrong. It wasn't on the rebound. He got crossed up going up the face and wasn't able to reel it in on the landing. He had to go around that obstacle, uh, but was able to get back on course. And he gave a great run at it, but unfortunately, that was a that was a big mistake. And what difference do you think it made as far as he was then not able to apply any pressure to Bryce throughout the rest of the run? Do you think that made a big difference? Yeah, Bryce is so cool. I mean, uh, he just you're not going to rattle him. And he truly was really, I mean, game on the whole time. He drove through that chicane section each time without really any risk at all. He kept it fast, though, yep. but he never stepped out. He didn't have to go to that final race fast because he knew that mistake had been made and we did see as we went through the rounds today as the drivers started to push each other we didn't see really any crashes spins or accidents early there were a ton of them in the second half of the race day because they were just pushing the that much harder and here we're going to collect our podium finishers rob mccachran coming back up to the mountain in his uh, rockstar makita truck and the two red bull fords will be there on the box as well these guys, I'm sure it was fun to do this no matter where they finished. It has to be a blast to get out here in the snow. Bryce Menzies crawls out. We'll see, uh, get to talk to him. You can see all the safety gear. There's the neck restraint coming off. All the drivers wearing head and neck restraints. And he's going to go over and congratulate the 
elder statesman of the sport, Ricky Johnson, 50 years old. And, of course, Bryce Menzies now 27 years old. We've been calling him the young gun. And, you know, I've said on uh, shows before I really don't like Bryce because he's well-spoken, good-looking, and a <laughs> great driver. It's, it's a lot to be jealous of for sure. I now didn't say I was jealous. Rush. <laughs> you didn't say it. Yeah, let's send it down to Kelly <laughs> with well, uh, Ricky Johnson. We saw Johnson. the embrace between the two teammates, Ricky Johnson and Bryce Menzies. Ricky, you come up just short of defending your Frozen Rush title. You made that mistake early on. What was your mindset from that point forward? Well, it, the, the course got a little bit more tore up than I thought, and I was just holding it wide open. I probably should have checked to get the jump to, to get the truck straight, but knowing that I had to make ground on Bryce, I just gave it all I had. And, and with the ice, and you can't see the conditions, my wheels landed a little bit off a of groove, sent me sideways, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, if my aunt had balls, she'd be my uncle. I made a mistake. Bryce did not. Congratulations to him. It's great to see a kid that I've worked with and mentored. You know, if I have given it to somebody, I didn't give it to him. He, he deserved it. And he took it from me. Talk about just this event in general this year, going head to head with these guys, seeing each other out on the course. Yeah, it was difficult because I'll be honest with you, whoever gets the hole shot, whoever gets the right lane is a tough person to beat because as you go up the hill, you can't see. But then, you, you know, they kind of balances out. So I think we would have had a great race if I would have made that big mistake at the beginning. So I just want to thank Douglas Motorsports, Red Bull, KMC, Replay HD, and, and uh, all the guys from Rugged Radios and everybody. And also BF Goodrich, man. They gave everybody tires to go tear this stuff up. So congratulations to Bryce and to Rob, let's go party. Well, for Ricky Johnson, it will be a second place finish. He came up just short, of course, to his teammate, the young gun, as we keep calling him, Bryce Menzies. And Bryce, what a heck of a day you had out there. What's it like to win, to beat the guy that has been your teammate and mentor? Oh, it's amazing. You know, he's been my teammate for four years and he's helped me through pretty much everything. He helped me win three championships in Pro 2. and. Uh, he gave me a lot of ice coming into this race, so to start out of, off the season with a win is huge. I couldn't be more stoked, and just got to thank Red Bull for you know believing in us and putting on an event like this. I mean, it's incredible. I've never been this tired in an off-road race in a Baja 1000. This course got so chewed up after six laps, but uh, it was amazing. These BFG tires with the spikes are one off. So much traction off the start. Me and Ricky he got me, and I got a little traction. I almost drove over the back of him. It was a little scary for a second, but. Uh, that was our plan to get me and him in the final. We did it. Got to thank all my sponsors for making this possible. Red Bull, KMC Wheels, uh, GoPro, Rigid Industries, Discount Tire. Everybody helps me out. Great way to start the season. Ricky had his issues early on. Were you able to let up at all after that? You know, my, my spotter just kept telling me, dig, dig, dig. And, uh, you know, with him coming behind you, you can never let up. He made one mistake, he said. And uh, every time I'd come down the hill, I'd see him turning. I'm like, it's going to be close, it's going to be close. And we pulled it off, and it feels great. Bryce Menzies, your 2015 Frozen Rush champion. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations indeed. That was the matchup that everyone was hoping to see. The fastest qualifiers facing off in the final. And it's just a game of what if now. If Johnson had not made that mistake, who knows what might have happened. Yeah, definitely. And it may be one of those golden moments in, in racing where the passing of the torch was handed off. You know, the veterans, Rob McCachron and Ricky Johnson, both mentors to Bryce over the years at Menzies Motorsports. Now Bryce reigning supreme here. So he's definitely the future of our sport. We'll see if the veterans can get back on top somewhere during the rest of the season. Yeah, you definitely know they're not going to give up without a fight. Hopefully more great racing to come between those drivers and everyone else in what was really an all-star cast of drivers here. It was awesome to bring it to you. We still have some work to do, though. Why not congratulate these drivers with our trophy presentation? All right, well, let's give away some one-of-a-kind trophies for a one-of-a-kind event here at Sunday River, the second-ever Red Bull Frozen Rush. We change the order of the podium. Let's start with third, second, then first. Here we go. Let's give away some trophies. Third place at Red Bull Frozen Rush 2015 from Las Vegas, Rob McCachron. Rob McCacken in that number 21 grabs his respective podium spot and handed the spiked metal tire trophy. Hold it up there, Rob Mack grabbing third place here at Red Bull Frozen Rush 2015. Now this gentleman won the inaugural Red Bull Frozen Rush last year. He's still on the podium, but just a step down. And the number 48 Red Bull truck, second place at the 2015 Red Bull Frozen Rush is Ricky Johnson. So 
many trophies, so many decorations from these two gentlemen standing atop the podium. So much dirt, so much tire has been shredded. And now a gentleman that's making a name for himself, 27 years old from Las Vegas, Nevada. He's in the number seven Red Bull truck. And your winner, the 2015 Red Bull Frozen Rush, Bryce Menzies. Hold them up high, boys. They're heavy, but that means it's hard work. The first place, the heaviest of them all, Bryce Menzies grabs first place, Ricky Johnson second, and Rob Mack grabs third. Thank you so much, Sunday River, for being part of history of the second ever Red Bull Frozen Rush. Well, that was awesome. Congrats to Bryce Menzies, Rob McCacker, Rick Johnson, uh, the top three today. But really, it was just a blast to watch these guys. And I'm sure they all had fun no matter where they finished, although they would have liked to have beaten Bryce Menzies. Well, the weather started out a little rough this morning, but it's beautiful this afternoon. And I think the racing equally as well. I mean, everything was spot on all day long. It was exciting. The head to head played out perfectly. I mean, seeing the trucks side by side really was a huge gain for the Frozen Rush. Well, then, thank everyone for joining us today at Sunday River Resort. And there's a lot more to see on Red Bull TV, including video on demand content from the famous Dakar Rally, which is underway now through January 17th. And it's widely considered one of the greatest challenges in all of motorsports. You can follow the adventure on Red Bull TV or at redbull.com slash Dakar for daily highlights. And our next live stream here starts January 29th. We'll have surfing with the Volcom Pipe Pro live from the world famous Banzai Pipeline. And Dakar Rally, again, all this month. Check it out, Red Bull TV at RedBull.com. Dakar, as you see these guys celebrating, there's no doubt there's great talent when you consider the Dakar Rally and all the other things that we have as part of the Red Bull Signature Series. This will be part of the Signature Series on NBC on March 1st. There's no doubt about it. What these guys were able to do today shows that no matter what sport or motorsport you're talking about, these are some of the most elite in the world. Very impressive performance today. Would you like to get behind the wheel of one of these things in the snow one day? I'd love to be invited <laughs> to come out. I'd have to get a Pro 4, though, but maybe Scott Douglas could build me one. He did an excellent job, put one of them up on the podium. So glad you're able to join us today. An awesome day. Obviously, it was cold out, but when you go to the ski slopes, you know you're going to have some fun in the powder. That's exactly what we did for Cameron Steele and Kelly Stavis. I'm Jason Wagan. Maybe the torch has been passed today as Bryce Menzies takes the championship away from Rick Johnson at Red Bull Frozen Rush.